we said that this is our year of impact and we give you the acronym of impact and the M is moving forward with focus for us. Family, you can believe God for multiple things at once. You can believe God for a house, a car, a man, a woman at once. You can do that. Some of us like that. Multi-talented. You can do that. Do three and four things one time. But you can believe God for three and four things. But there are seasons of your life when there's one thing you have to give your faith focus or give it focus. And your faith will need your focus for that one thing. You can believe God for multiple things, but there are seasons of your life. There's one thing, one mountain. Why we couldn't cast the devils out of him? It was easy. The other demons we dealt with. Why this one? He said, because this demon comes out only by prayer and fasting. There's some situations in your life that demands you giving focus to. I'm believing God for this. This is my mountain. Before this year is out, I'm going to get it. Three important things you need to know to stay grounded and focus. And if you don't know them, you can be swayed or distracted from your mountain. Write them down quickly. In this season of your life, first thing you need to know is who you are. Because you know who you are. You're not your title. You're not your car. You're not your intellect. Who are you? Who are you without a job? Who are you without the applause of men? Who are you without your title? We have a major identity problem in the church. Who are you? Because if you don't know who you are, you will be anybody or you'll become anything. Who are you? Okay, you know, you can't be 50 and don't still don't know who you are. Matter of fact, you can't be 30 and don't know who you are. You even shouldn't be 18 and don't know who you are. I can handle 16 or 17 and under, but not 18 and over. He's getting ready to leave the scene. And he's going to leave his presence and the kingdom assignment to 12 men. He asked the question, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Some say you're Elias. Some say you're Jeremiah. Some say you're one of the prophets. He said, since you can be representing me in the earth, I need to know if you know who I am. Peter got up in the Holy Ghost and Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said, blessed are you, Simon Barjuna, for flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you, but this was given to you by my father. Only someone who know who they are could help you to discover who you are. A preacher who's just trying to find himself can't help you find you. A mother who has the title without identity. That's why children, you supposed to have babies. And that's why boys don't get married. And girls don't get married. 
or shouldn't get married because you're just trying to find yourself. Who are you? The second thing is important that you to know is uh, why were you born? Why am I here? If you don't know who you are, it's going to be difficult for you to find why you were born. The discovery of purpose is the discovery of identity. John the Baptist was not his name. John the Baptist was who he was. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is coming. Repent and be baptized. The kingdom of heaven is coming. He's out there in the wilderness preaching repent and baptizing them in water. He did not have the Holy Ghost. Jesus would be the one who would come after him, who would baptize them with the Holy Ghost and with fire. One preaching baptism to repentance, the next one come preaching baptism in the Holy Ghost. One preaching repentance, next one preaching the kingdom. Who are you? Is in discovering who you are, you will find why you were created. And then the third thing is, where are you going? One is identity. The next one is, one is identity, why you were born. Next one is purpose, who you are, why you were born. And the next one is vision, where are you going? Where you going? I know. When you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. So, you, people who don't have these three things down back, they will be unassuming, unpredictable, unreliable. They're like children. Because Joshua's still trying to find himself. Sometimes he's sitting in the car and don't say nothing. What's wrong with you, boy? Ain't nothing. You ain't saying nothing. What I do, you nothing. All of a sudden, a couple minutes later, he playing. I say, so why you want to play with me now? The boy trying to find himself. All them questions he asks, he's trying to find himself. Some of you, your children are in a season where they're trying to find these three things. And if you don't know how to walk with them through it, you're going to hurt them. Because it's in this season where they're trying to they investigating themselves. They're trying to find themselves. So she's not a sissy. Your daughter's not a, not a lesbian. She's trying to find herself. Your son is not a drug addict. He, da, da, da. They're trying to find themselves. He's not really rebellious. He's trying to find himself. And not until you find yourself, know who you are, know what you were born to do, and have a direction on where you're going, it's going to be difficult for you to help guide them through that. Why y'all ain't saying something? These three things continue to evolve as you grow, but you got to know them. I still learn in me, but at least I got a foundation. I know where I'm going. And, it's, and as I move and I go, it unfolds. The picture becomes clearer. Then it becomes bigger. My assignment is to help some of you find you. And people who are still trying to find themselves, find their purpose and don't have vision, they're going to be a major problem in your life. And in your organization. My wife said something to me years ago. Changed my whole life. She said to me, she said, what you worrying about that about for? She said, pick your fight. That ain't your battle. Let's go to Joshua 1 and 7 first. Only be strong. Come on, Josh. 
and very courageous. Only be strong and very courageous. Joshua name means victory and salvation. You gonna get in? You walk in victory and be the deliverer. Be strong. Be courageous. Go ahead. That you may observe to do according. That you may observe. Here is the focus. That you may observe to do. Go ahead. According to all the law. According to all that's in the law. Which Moses, my servant, commanded Which you. Which Moses, my servant, command you. Do not turn from it. Oh, here it is now. To the right. I got a revelation. Ah. I got a mountain. Glory to God. Do not turn from it. Do not turn from it. Don't turn from that. This is what I got for you. I got the promised land for you. This is your guideline, the word. Keep your eyes on the word. Don't turn from the law. Go ahead. To the right hand. Don't go to the, the right. Or to the left. Or to the right, left. That you may prosper. That you may what? Prosper. That you may what? Prosper. Could it be your next season of prosperity is in the ability not to turn from the left or the right? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Wherever you go. Wherever you go. I want that eighth verse. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall observe to do all that is written therein. And in doing so, you will make your way prosperous. Joshua 6. You got the one? Yes, sir. One to six. Hey, hey Josh, now, Josh, you got an opportunity to go into the promised land. This is the promised land. That's your mountain. What's blocking the next season is a wall around your promise. I'm telling you, you got too much on you to be wasting time right now. The anointing is too great. The assignment is too great. You got too much on you. It's in Joshua 6. Read. Now Jericho was securely now shut Jericho up. Now Jericho was securely shut up. Because, the because of the children of Israel. They shut it down because they know what the children of Israel had. The promise is behind the wall. Go ahead. None went out. None gone out. None and, came in. And That's none came in. Uh-huh. And the Lord said to Joshua. And the Lord spoke to Joshua. See. See. I have given Jericho. I have given you this mountain. Into your hand. It's in your hand. Now he didn't get it yet, but the Lord said, this is what I'm going to do for you. Right. Go ahead. It's king and the mighty man of valor. Yes, sir. You shall march around the city. You should march around this city. All you men of war. All you men of war. You shall go all around the city you once. You should go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. This you should do. You ain't got time to waste right now. You're getting this instruction from God. You got your promise behind the wall. Glory to God. God already say it's yours. It ain't in your physical hands yet. But if you're going to get it, boy, this is what you got to do. I want you to walk around the wall six days. Once a day. Who you don't talk. Don't say nothing. Some of you talk too much. That's why people can praise God figure you out. You're, you're talking too much. Walk around it. Don't say nothing to anybody. Just walk. The first day you walk, bam. Go go in the camp, relax. You ain't saying nothing to anybody. The next day come, walk. Don't say nothing. He's walking. He got his promise behind the wall. God already said, I'm going to give it to you. He ain't getting his physical hand yet, but he got a word. Walk. Fifth day, walk. Sixth day, walk. On the seventh day, this is what I want you to do. On the seventh day, I want you to march around that same wall seven times on the seventh day. Seven is the number of rest. You're going to rest in me. Seven is the number of completion. It's the number of perfection. That thing I promise you will be perfected. 
All I need you to do is follow my instruction. He said, and when the seventh time come on the seventh day of marching, I want those ministers and those who bear the horns and the trumpet to blow. And there's going to be a sound that's going to come from y'all who march and followed my instruction. And everything that's been blocking up your mountain, you're going to walk into it and get it. Y'all ain't saying. Yes, sir. Y'all ain't saying. Oh, God, I feel this on me today. Shake your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I got a promise. It's behind the wall. Every hindrance going is going to fall in the name of Jesus. Whatever God tells me to do in this hour, I'm going to do it. I got a promise behind the wall, and I'm going to get it. Anybody got a promise? Is it that's your healing? What is it? Next season of your financial breakthrough? What it is? What is your mountain? He marched. Numbers 13. Let's go into number 13. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses. Woo! Now, now, now they went into, or said to them, go spy out the land. They have an opportunity to go into this promise. God said, go spy out the land. Get 12 leaders from each tribe. And go spy out the land. They went in to spy out the land. Watch this. When they got there, giants were in the land, but they still was able to cut down some grapes. If the, if the giants didn't see you to cut down just a little bit of grapes, then you, you can let them stop you from getting the whole bunch, the whole tree. Get your neighbors, I ain't scared of no giants. I'm a giant slayer. So they come back to give report to Moses. They have the cluster of grapes in their hand. Ten of them says, I'm trying to bring it to the... Ten of them said, even though we've been in the line, we get the grape. Giants are there, we ain't able. Because they were giants, but we saw ourselves as grasshopper. If you have a grasshopper mentality, you stay on the porch. In this season, we need people who see giants, but no giant. They are giant killer. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. Oh, oh, no, no, that's too much for you. Hit your neighbor saying, this is no punk here. This is no punk here. This is, and the Lord ain't connect you to no punk. I'm a giant killer. Yes, sir. I'm a, gi I'm, I'm a giant killer. Hit your neighbor and say, neighbor, however you see yourself, that's how the enemy going to see you. If the giant saw them, they wouldn't have made it out of the, off, off the property. They saw themselves as grasshoppers. Ten says that they are unable. Caleb, go ahead. Let us go up at once. Shut up. He's still the people. There's some people in your life you need to shut down. Man, y'all ain't going with me. Man, y'all ain't going with me. Y'all ain't going. Shut up. Shut up. He's still the people. He says, shut up. Read. And said, let us go up. Let's go up at once. And take possession. And take possession. For we are well for able, we are well able to, overcome it. to overcome it. Watch this. It is the will of God for everyone to go in. So because 10 said they were not able, they cost the whole 12 not to go in. Hallelujah. Because 10 was negative, the whole bunch suffered. Joshua and Caleb say they could go in. Ten said we're not able. God said, I want you all going halfway. I want everybody in. So all of them was disqualified because ten disbelieved. Some of you should have already been to the next season of your life, but you're hanging with people who can't. Oh, y'all ain't going. Oh, let me come over here. Let me come over here. If you are a giant killer and you're hanging with grasshoppers mentality, they can cause you to miss the next season of blessing. Read. The men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, 
The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom they saw in it are men of great stature. Yeah, they there. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak. Yes. Came from the giants. Yes. And we were like grasshoppers. And we were like hoppers. Grasshoppers. In, in our own sight. In our sight, not in their sight. They saw them. They saw themselves as grasshoppers. The giants didn't see them. And, and so God's getting ready to blind the eyes of your enemy. God said, if you could see what I put in you, you ain't got to worry about your enemies. I'm going to take them suckers out. Yes, I'm going to take them out. All I need you to do is tap into what I put in you. Grasshoppers mentality. Joshua 14. Caleb has an opportunity to get the same promise that they miss. He's now 85 years old. When he was 40, generation, he missed it. But it's your neighbor say he ain't missed it this time. God gonna keep you around long enough to get it. You might have missed it before, but you ain't gonna miss it this time. Man, you know something? I feel like running down the aisle down there somewhere. You, you miss it. You miss it before you ain't gonna. You miss it before you ain't gonna. You miss it before you will not miss it this time. God's gonna bring you full circle. Y'all ain't saying nothing, and you're gonna be ready to get it this. Oh Jesus, that's why you can't afford to commit suicide, honey. You about to become full circle. Joshua 14, he has an opportunity. He's 85 years old. He's 85. Did I say 85? He's, did I say he's 85? Did I say the brother is 85 years old? 45 years later, hallelujah, he still have this thing in his spirit. He has still have this dream down in his belly. 85 years, he's still seeing what God showed him. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. Hallelujah, I believe God. Hallelujah. You have to take some people from around him so that he don't miss it again. Did I say he's 85? Did I say he's 85? Read, son. And now, uh -huh. behold, uh -huh. the Lord has kept me alive. Stacy. Stacy. Who? Uh -huh. If you say to this mountain, he's 85. Here it is. Read. As he said, as he said, these 45 years, 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses, the Lord while in watch Israel, this. he spoke it to Moses, while in Israel, One, didn't he speak it to Moses, right, right, sometimes we ain't got faith to believe for yourself, but God will speak to you, Moses, Boy, y'all got to catch up with me, though. I'm serious with this. Go ahead, son. Wandered in the wilderness. We wandered in the wilderness. And now. And you know what the wilderness does? Get some stuff from off you. Right, right. That's what the wilderness does. Oh, Jesus. Note this, please. Sometimes when you're trying to find you, the Lord sends trouble. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. To get you to a place where you find you. So he allows the wilderness because listen, you're going to get this thing. You're coming back at this again and you can't afford to miss it this time. You're coming back at this again and I need to take you through the wilderness. I don't know how long you got to go to the wilderness. The fellow been in it for, 40, for 45 years. And watch this. He says, he says, read. And now. Look at your neighbor and say, I ain't too old. My boa has come in. My house come in. My, yeah, my wife come in. My ministry come in. Y'all ain't saying, okay, let me go home because some of y'all yawning on me and I can't take that. That's offense to the preacher. Come on, read. Here I am. Here I am. This day. This day. 85 years 85 old. 85 years. As yet I am as strong this day. I'm just as strong now. As on the day that as Moses. As I was. When Mo Moses sent me. Uh, sent me there. Just as my strength was then. Just as my strength 
was there. You might feel weak, but you got it in you. So now is my strength for war. I thought, oh, Jesus, devil, you will come back at me again to stop me. I want you to know I'm just as strong as I was 84, 45 years ago. You ain't going to stop me this time. I need you to please look at somebody and say, I may be down, but I'm not out. And the mere fact that you woke up this morning, God's getting ready to take you to a place that you have never been in your life. I feel like shouting in the Lord's church. Somebody open their mouth and say neighbor I still got a fight in me you talk to the wrong neighbor tell him I still got a fight in me I might have lost my house but I still got a fight I might have lost my health but I still got a fight oh bless his name look at him I still got a fight he says go ahead read son both for going out I, I got enough strength to go out and for coming and in and for coming in here it is now therefore now therefore give me this mountain give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in of that which day. the Lord spoke to me for you heard in that day for you heard in that day how the Anakim how the Anakim yeah were there was there and that the cities were great yes. and fortified yes it may be that the Lord uh -huh. will be with me. Uh, it will be, he's with me. And I shall be, be able. And to, I should be able. To drive them out. To drive them out. As the Lord has said. As the Lord said. This is my mountain. I had an opportunity to see it 80, 45 years ago. God, you made a promise to me. And I believe I'm strong enough now to get what you promised. You ain't saying nothing. When it was all over, Joshua said, Hallelujah, that mountain that God promised, go ahead and get it. And I came out to tell somebody that devil should have killed you before you got here. Because the mere fact that you're still here, if God made a promise, he's not a man that he should lie. Neither the, okay. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, name your mountain. I got to go. I'm, a, I'm out of time, but I'm not on message. Look at your neighbor and say, name your mountain. If they can't name their mountain, look at somebody else and say, name your mountain. Come on, that, that's the wrong neighbor. Look at somebody and say, name your mountain. Is it money? Name it. Is it a next season in your marriage? Name it. Is it peace in your house? Name it. Whatever your mountain is, God sent you here to let you know. Hallelujah, you're just as strong 10 years ago as you are today. And he is getting ready to cause you to walk into it. Could it be that the Lord sent you here to tell you you're just one praise away from your turn around? I feel like shouting I feel please shake your neighbor they say you ain't got to shout like this well if blind Bartimaeus shouted and Jesus stood still and Joshua and the children of Israel shouted and the well and the walls fall I'm gonna give God a shout because a miracle is behind my praise do I have a witness in here open your mouth Look at your neighbor and say, your problem is you ain't got a mountain. And then for some of you, you ain't got no devils who know your mountains trying to stop you from getting into it. But the mere fact that you're here, I come to remind you that there's a mountain before you. There's a next season in your life. And there are many adversaries. But the Lord sent you here for me to let you know he already dealt with the adversaries. And I brought you full cycle to let you know this is the day that I have made and you need to rejoice and be glad in it. Shake your neighbor saying, neighbor, I'm ready to go over.